One trick in physics is that absolute measurements are not always done. Oftentimes, real-life measurements are done relative to another standard or unit or relative to other measurements done by other set of observers. This is problematic at some cases, especially for objects traveling at near speeds of light or objects at about 3 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Fortunately, our great Albert Einstein was able to come up with a set of theories called relativity that explain such differences in calculations and observations for objects traveling at the speed of light. In this video, we will explain how this special theory of, of relativity resolved the conflicts between Newtonian mechanics and Maxwell's electromagnetic theory. And we will explain the consequences of the postulates of general and the special theory of relativity. In 1865, James Clerk Maxwell, perhaps he is familiar with you already in our discussion of light phenomena, theorized that electromagnetic field moves through space at a constant speed. Maxwell wrote a set of four equations that simultaneously describe all the laws of electricity and magnetism. In his theory, the speed of light is expressed as c is equal to 1 over square root of Greek symbol mu sub-zero, where it is the representation of the permeability of a vacuum with a constant value of 1.257 times 10 raised to negative 6 henrys per meter, and Greek symbol epsilon sub-zero, which is the permittivity of a vacuum, equal to 8.854 times 10 raised to negative 12 farad over meter. Upon evaluating Maxwell's equation for the speed of light, he had computed the speed value of c is equal to 2.9979 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second. From this, Maxwell's equation proved that the speed of electromagnetic wave is universal. Albert Einstein believed that Maxwell's equations are valid in all inertial frames. In physics, the term inertial frames pertain to any system which is not accelerating or in a state of inertia. A quick example for inertial frame, because this is where the theory of relativity revolves, is when a driver with a car running at 100 km per hour he slumps in the brakes and he was thrust forward. Inside the car is not the inertial frame of reference, but the observer who is not moving on the side of the road is the inertial reference frame. From Maxwell's equation, Einstein in 1905 published his theory of special relativity to explain how motions can be compared in different inertial frames. In this theory, Einstein used the word relative to refer to the motions between two objects as relative with one another and how fast one object moves with respect to the other object is the central idea of this theory. A lot of you perhaps heard this theory before and most of the time associated it with complex modern physics concepts. But generally, the special theory of relativity has only two postulates. First, the physical laws have the same mathematical form for all frames of reference moving at a constant velocity with respect to each other. This idea is simply known to us as principle of relativity. Simply stated, we can say that there is no correct frame of reference when we are looking for two moving objects and any laws of physics can be applied to all reference frames involved. Next, the speed of light in a vacuum is independent of the motion of its source and of the observer. This only says that the speed of light is always constant, which we can round off to 3 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Once again, the two postulates of a special theory of relativity are, first, all laws of physics are the same for all frame of reference, and second, 
the speed of light remains constant at 3 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Back to the postulates of the special theory of relativity, it has several consequences. Like if a spaceship fires a laser beam at an asteroid moving toward it at half the speed of light, the laser beam hitting the asteroid would still travel at exactly the speed of light, not 1.5 times the speed of light. Einstein noted that for the speed of light to be universal, the motion through space can be diverted into motion through time or the motion through time can be diverted into motion through space. In simple words, space contracts and time dilates as a consequence of relativity. Let us try to explain these concepts in a way we can easily understand. A special theory of relativity suggests that moving clocks run slower than stationary clocks. Let us imagine you and your friend are on a racetrack. You are looking at her from a bench while she is running 100 meters and her speed is at almost the speed of light. Both of you have clock of your own. At the end of the run, when you compare your lap time, you observe that your friend's clock measured slightly less than what you did. If we put you as our frame of reference, you will observe that your friend's clock is slower because she is moving. In this case, we say that the time delays. While in your friend's perspective, she thinks that the track becomes slightly shorter or the space contracts, thus she finished the track in less time. The amount of flat contraction and time dilation is given by the Lorentz factor, named after Hendrik Lorentz, who had been exploring transformation equations even before Einstein began his work. The Lorentz factor, which we use this Greek symbol, is given by the equation 1 over square root of 1 minus velocity squared over speed of light. Let us cite another evidence of time dilation and length contraction. A very classic example of time dilation is a twin paradox. The twin paradox is a thought experiment involving two identical twins wherein one traveled space in a high-speed rocket and the other one remains on Earth. After returning to Earth, the traveler found out that his twin is much older than he is. This paradox initially came out from Einstein's publication. In 1911, Einstein reinstated that this is, in fact, not a paradox, but is a natural consequence of the special theory of relativity. But how can we calculate exactly the time difference in this phenomenon? The equation for calculating time dilation has been established to be equal to change in relative time is equal to the proper time or the time in observer's own frame of reference over square root of 1 minus velocity squared over speed of light squared. You can notice that our denominator is the Lorentz factor. Remember this formula because we will use this in our work example. In Let us have now length contraction. Remember our previous example about your friend who thought that she finished earlier because the length becomes shorter. As a natural consequence of a special theory of relativity, the length of an object seems to contract when traveling at relativistic speeds. In equation, we can represent it as L is equal to L sub zero multiplied by the Lorentz factor, where L is the relative length or the length measured by another observer. L sub zero is the proper length or the length measured by the observer on the original reference. V is the relative velocity of two inertial frames, and C is the speed of light. Take note of this formula, along with the previous formula we had in time difference, because in the next video, we will have some work examples. So far, what we had discussed is how Einstein explained motions in different inertial frames using his theory of special relativity. This theory has two postulates. First, the principle of relativity, which states that physical laws have the same mathematical form for all frames of reference moving at a constant velocity with respect to each other. And second, the speed of light remains constant 
and independent of the motion of its source and of the observer. The consequences of this special theory of relativity include, include time dilation and length contraction. These two consequences are significant only when one of the two objects are traveling at relativistic speed or speed of light. For our next video, we will have some work examples of, of length contraction and time dilation. Once again, this is Gilmer de Castro and see you in the next video.